Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the series on the 1984 Orient Red Wagon. And today is going to be redoing the zinc plating in the engine compartment. So let's get started. Okay, in previous videos, you can uh, see where I've already removed the linkage on the top of the engine because I've uh, done a valve adjustment and cleaned the valve cover. And you can see a lot of the uh, original zinc plating is still pretty darn good on this car. Yeah, it looks really good down in here. But we are going to put it back to how it would have left the factory, which is extremely bright. and It's very vibrant, and there's a big difference. This is what they look like when they're 40 years old and, you know, garage kept immaculate vehicles. So right now, let's go ahead and start disassembling all the parts here. I'm not sure how much disassembly you guys actually want to see. Uh, kind of not that exciting, but it's just a 17 millimeter. And we need to go around here and loosen <clears throat> all of the injector line nuts. <clears throat> And sometimes those things can be on there pretty good. All right, we have the same fittings that we do up here, down here on the injection pump. And this is the best way to get those off. See, it's a crow's foot. I can stick it down there and it comes at a 90 degree angle. So I can just go down here from the top and get around there. There we go. And then we can break those loose. All right, there we go. Go ahead and get these out of here. Those are actually pretty nice for being original, but just wait till you see us refurbish all of these. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and drain out the power steering fluid, get our power steering lines off here and where they're connected to the pump. And then we have our main vacuum line that goes up here to the vacuum pump. That one's a little tricky to get off down there. So let's go ahead and start there. We're also going to change the power steering fluid filter. It's down inside there. And you got to put a 10 millimeter on here to get to it. Take the little nut off there. And we'll pull out the spring loaded. There we go. There's a spring under here that holds the filter in there. Okay, I can see that this filter has been changed because uh, it's got a hangst in there. And the ones you saw normally from Mercedes were made by man. Uh, both equally good companies. Oops, I gotta take that little nut off to get this out. Okay, let's drain that. Now we're just gonna suck out this fluid before we uh, take off our power steering lines. That way it doesn't spill everywhere. The lines are higher now than the fluid so I won't spill it everywhere. Okay, now before I remove these lines, let me take this off of here. Notice how they're routed. I'll put the low pressure line back. So the high pressure line, see there's no hose clamp. It's crimped. Uh, the low pressure line is just a hose, hose clamp. But you notice this high pressure line goes up over your main vacuum line. The low pressure line goes in between the AC manifold and your main vacuum line. You have to route them that way. Otherwise, over time, the lines will rub against things you know, just from vibration and you'll rub a hole in your line. So that's the correct routing. Let's go ahead and finish getting this lower one off here. I mean the high pressure one off. All right, I've already got our low pressure line off here. I think that was a, Let's yeah, see. that was a 22 millimeter. Now we need to go down here and get our high pressure line off and it's right underneath there. And that's a 17 millimeter. So, all right. And there is our high pressure line. Now, to get way down here on, here we go. There's our uh, vacuum line. We get a crow's foot down in there. Oh. 
All right, there's our main vacuum line is unscrewed from the master cylinder reservoir. All right, and there's a little washer right there. And then we can list, lift out our main vacuum line and we're gonna re, have that replated. All right, and the last thing here is our cruise control module. I mean, our cruise control mounting base. And that's a uh, 13, millimeter, 13 millimeter. And we can literally lift this up and we'll just push right there and undo our clip because we want to put that back on the new one and we're going to replate this. All right, guys, that are, that is all of the parts on the engine uh, that get replated. And I've actually already removed... You can see I already have these pieces in stock that were plated. Those are the uh, fan shroud clips. I've already removed, I got to remove the radiator clips here. That gets replated. And our three little screws that hold on the air intake, those get replated. So the clips, and we had our oil cooler bracket here. See that oil cooler is loose? That gets replated. Uh, and of course, our oil cap. So does that. Okay, here's most of the parts that get replated. Uh, some of the clips already had put back on the car. There's all our linkages. There's the main leakage back to the firewall, the injectors, uh, the injector lines, uh, the base plate for the cruise control. Uh, we also have the cruise control mount that will be replated, cruise control cover that will be replated, um, our stop lever, all the nuts and bolts and screws. And uh, that's about 99% of it. I have a couple other pieces that aren't in the picture here. Okay, we have all of the zinc plated parts back from my plater. And guys, each batch of zinc plating, um, you know, they come out slightly different. This is done by hand. Um, how long is it in the plating? You know, where was it hanging in the bucket or the, the batch? It, it all comes out a little different. I was talking to my plater just a minute ago. I think this is quite possibly the best batch we have received. Uh, look at that. It's got like the perfect amount of like rainbow glisten to it. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but see how the light kind of reflects off. Uh, that's just, oh yeah, that's a good piece. See how the, how it almost makes a rainbow effect. But uh, this came out just absolutely amazing. Um, actually already, I was excited to put stuff together. I've got the uh, fittings for the high pressure and low pressure power steering hose on here. And I just put the uh, cap, look at that oil cap, look how good it came out. I just put that back on, let's remove this from the engine. And uh, well, let's go ahead and start the reassembly process. Okay, here we have all our throttle linkages. Now here are the little arms that connect all the throttle pieces. I've already measured those out and matched them exactly. Here we go, here's the original. Uh, Piece that came off the car so I've already matched for example I'll take one of the plated pieces and I'll set it right down and I'll make sure it's exactly the identical length then I don't have to make any adjustments when it's on the car now what we do want to take off this original linkage uh, we're going to disassemble this we want the uh, return spring and we want the nylon throttle bushing uh, guys, I've never seen either of those things ever wear out on one of these cars. Uh, so let's go ahead, disassemble this, and we're also going to save some of our E-clips here. All right, we're just going to start taking off some of this. We can pry our E-clips off, and I have more if I lose them. Uh, you can order those on Amazon, but we're just going to pry them off, all, all these pieces. Okay. And these will actually be sent off to be cleaned and plated. We have another E-clip right under here. There we go. Got that little E-clip off. There's a little bushing. Let's see if I can get, a, get access to this guy. First, I have to take our uh, return spring off of here. There we go. All right, that's the return spring that we want. I can actually set these pieces aside here. Okay, so here is our replated. I call this the throttle linkage base plate because that's what is the base plate that everything attaches to. So here's our throttle return spring. We just want to set that guy there and we want our nylon bushing. 
Uh, guys, Mercedes actually says, do not grease this. That's just a little nylon bushing, and I've never seen one of these wear out. But we'll take that off of there. And that goes onto our new piece. See the new plated piece right there? This just goes right on here. And I like to go ahead and stick my E-clip on there. And that way we're done with that. And we don't lose that little piece. Okay, perfect. So now I can take this apart and this will go back to the plater for cleaning. Next thing we want to do, here is our main uh, throttle plate. Let's see, this one's going to go on here first. And then this one goes on top. Now first I want to get some automatic transmission fluid and we want to lubricate these pieces before we slip them on there. I like to use that better than grease because, you know, dirt easily gets attracted to clumps of grease on here and ATF fluid not so much. So let's go ahead and put these together. Okay, put a little automatic transmission fluid down in here. There we go. Now we got to pull this spring clip right around the back. There we go. All right, I got to put this piece on. I forgot to stick that on there. All right, now let's lubricate this one. There we go. All right, let's spin that around there. All right, there we go. So we now have our spring-loaded return. And our Bowden cable um, clip goes right on the top. And you see this tab right here? There you go. See that tab? It's very important when you install this piece that it's on this side of the tab. If you get it on this side of the tab, the Bowden cable will not shift your transmission correctly. It's got to be on that side of the tab. Okay. So... That is how it sits on the car, and we can go ahead and reinstall this plate. Okay, there's the Bowden cable I was talking about, and this plate sits right up here like this. Now, this is our cruise control uh, lever attachment. That goes right here, and I've also zinc plated uh, the bolts that hold all that together. So we're just going to get one started here. Now this is aluminum guys, so you don't want to cross thread or force this together. All right, that's going to hold that there. And we'll put one over here. And you don't torque this down crazy tight. Like I said, your valve cover is aluminum, so you just snug this stuff up. There's not a great amount of force on any of these parts. So there's no reason to, you know, crank it down. Plus these are small bolts, you know, <clears throat> maximum foot pounds on a bolt that size is probably 15 to 20 foot pounds. We don't even want to do that much because it's aluminum. All right, once you got it snug, just give it a nice snug turn. And that's all you need, guys. There we go. Look at that, it's beautiful. Now here's where that Bowden cable is on this side of the tab. Because when we run our cable back through here, like that, there we go. See that cable gets pulled on in that direction. And there's the stop, the lever right there that pulls it, see? So if you have this on the other side of the lever, it won't pull that cable. All right, let's go ahead lubricate our Bowden cable with some automatic transmission fluid. And we're gonna put that right back on there. Now, see how it pulls that cable and then that cable can retract? That's the correct way to install that. Okay, when installing uh, the injector lines, um, you sometimes want to loosen these little clamps that hold the injector lines together, hold them in place so you can position everything. 
Okay, I've removed a couple of the little uh, retaining brackets. See if we can, yeah, those just hold the injector lines in place so I can get everything aligned. And uh, I'm just putting this original vacuum line clip back on here. There we go. That's how that goes. And I think I've got everything started. Okay, good. Now I'm just taking a crow's foot. Uh, that gives me like a right angle. So I can get down on these injector lines that are connected to the actual injection pump. This lets me tighten them up. Okay, you can barely see them right there. That allows me to just get on there like that and tighten these down. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. Now, let's move to the next item. Okay, now I need to get these little injector line brackets reinstalled. Like you can screw the two halves together. And then if you do it right, you can get them to slide over the lines. Let's see. There we go. And you just put a little eight millimeter on the back to hold the nut. All right, there we go. Let me put a couple more on those and we'll move to the next item. Okay, we have all the injector lines, oil cap, throttle linkage, Bowden cable. Uh, we have these lines attached down to the pump. So let's go ahead and attach our low pressure and high pressure lines and put in some power steering fluid. And then we will do the vacuum pump line that runs up through here and connects to our master vacuum line there. All right, guys, this uh, high pressure uh, power steering line can be a real bitch to get started. Uh, but this is aluminum and you don't want to cross thread it. So off camera, I just spent like five minutes trying to get the threads to start and uh, we got it to start. Uh, so just take your time when you're doing this one. You know, don't force anything and you'll eventually get it to thread. Now, also, it's important that we run these a certain way. So here's our main vacuum line. That's gonna come underneath here and go to the vacuum pump. So this runs over the top of it, but the low pressure line runs underneath it and above the, in, uh, the AC manifold. You wanna make sure you route them that direction or the lines will end up rubbing on, uh, you know, they will end up rubbing and you'll rub a hole in one of your lines over time. All right. All right, now here's where you want to get it up high enough where it doesn't rub on the manifold, but you also don't want it to rub uh, the AC manifold. You don't want it to rub on this line. So you want to hold it right about there and you want to tighten it in that position. Now, uh, let's go ahead and put our vacuum line on here. Wow, look how beautiful this piece came out. That is some nice zinc plating. All right, so this one goes down in here and see if I can get it started by hand. Maybe ha ha, I got it. <laughs> Guys, you gotta reach like, see see down in there? There's the nut all the way down there and you really, it's hard to get a wrench there to get it started, but that's good now. All right, now our vacuum line can run underneath there, like so. And it is not making contact with our high pressure line or low pressure line. And the low pressure line is not making contact uh, with the manifold. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and get some power steering fluid in there and our filter while we're at it. There's the filter you want to use. Man, I guess H85. And remember, all our fluid drained out, even of the steering box. That just slips down in there. See the filter elements? 
So since all our fluid drained out, we're gonna have to bleed the bubbles out of the system. For now, let's just get our spring back on there. And we'll put that guy back on there like that. And we'll put our nut, that's like a spring that holds the filter down in there. All right, let's get some fresh fluid in there. Here's what you want to use, guys. Uh, Dex Merc, and this is right there. So you can see that. Dexron 3. That's the stuff. All right. All right, I'll get the cap on, and we'll fire it up later and get the bubbles out of there. Okay, next thing we want to do is start putting on... Uh, the linkage and our throttle linkage pieces. Okay, first thing we want to do, fish this piece right through here, like that. And we need to put our new stop sticker on here. This is your throttle stop. We're gonna push that. And guys, these are really easy to drop. If you drop it, just make sure you have you know, order that little kit on Amazon that has all the little e-clips. Okay, cool. I got it on there. Throw a linkage here. Like that. And then it plugs in back here on the firewall. And that firewall bushing is solid. Now I need to put a clip here and a cotter pin back there. Okay, this is a really strange clip. And that what, that's what goes right there on the end of our throttle linkage that goes uh, into the firewall. Really, really strange clip. Now we need to put our cotter pin uh, back there on the back. Here's what that cotter pin looks like. There we go. All right, good. Got the cotter pin on. Now here is our injection pump line, our linkage right here, put a dab of lubricant on it, and right there, that's where that guy goes. Now, you might need to reattach it with uh, some channel locks, now let's put our linkages up here. Um, guys, it's kind of hard. Uh, to see what I'm doing. We're just going to lubricate each of these and see if we can get them reattached up here. All right, we got that one. And this one comes across and attaches right here. Let me get my channel locks. And we have a short one that attaches right up here. We're getting close. Look at that, very nice. Uh, sorry, not a cotter pin, I need to put an E-clip over here. And also like to just kind of lubricate everything by squirting transmission fluid and then kind of working it in here. Okay, now we're gonna put on our cruise control linkage right here. That goes there, we need to put two E-clips on there and there. And this one is going to go from here up to here like that. And then we got to mount our cruise control and another arm comes across there. Okay. Boom. Look at that, guys. It's beautiful. All right, let's get our cruise control mounted. Okay, guys, from the factory, they put a rivet right here. I think that's just for tamper proof. You can see there's a little rivet. So to take these off, you just break that little rivet. I guess it's because they didn't want people tampering with it. And that's just about it. Hold on, let me hit it one more, one more time. All right, so you take these out, and then this comes straight off. Right like that. 
and you can see all the the shaft does is just plugs right into the little retaining bushing down there at the end and here's ours right here so i'll put a little dab of grease in that retaining bushing before we put it back in there there we go we're gonna put a little dab just a smidge right on the end of that shaft because that's the part that goes back into the retaining bushing there we go and then we'll just slide this guy <laughs> it's a magnet so it's kind of hard to get to go back on there there we go because it wants to it wants to move out of the way there we go now we'll just put back in our retaining bolts God, doesn't that look good? That's how they look new from the factory, you guys. You can see the remnants of it here. Like on the back side, see where that's never been exposed to any elements. And let's get the back side mounted first. We'll get our little spacer down in there. All right. All right, let's just tighten all this back down. Perfect. All right, guys, that is ready to go back on the car. Okay, remember right here is where we had our clip for our diesel return hose. So we want to make sure we put that clip right back in there. And then this sits right here with two 13 millimeter bolts with little washers. Okay, so this mounts, let's see, just like that. Now this line comes across here. There we go. And through our clip over here on the body. See, there's our uh, original body clip there. And then we plug it back in up under, right, Oop right there so let me go ahead and do that and i kept the original mercedes clip where it clips onto our cruise control here let's see comes up around here make sure the holes are lined up there perfect we'll put that there now let's get the uh, uh bolts to mount this down All right, now let's put our final linkage on. All right, look at that, you guys. It is done. Very nice. Guys, that is a thing of beauty. And it all works perfect, lubricated, Very nice. Okay, we are on the home stretch. We want to go ahead and put our brackets back on to the uh, radiator. There we go. Got to get that one off. This is our uh, retaining bracket for our oil cooler that just slips right onto the radiator like that bolt goes right through there and okay one of the last two things we want to get the air cleaner housing assembly and oops I dropped these now these are the little screws that hold the air intake on and those are just eight millimeter we had to get those zinc plated too because they're plated from originally from the factory all right beautiful now let's clean up the air filter housing and get that reassembled okay we're going to clean up the air filter housing 
and the lid and then I'm going to attach the uh, new zinc plated clips that go around the side. So let me okay, go. we got these cleaned up in a parts washer. These are amazing, original condition. All right, to get these clips off, you can just come in here with a screwdriver and you just pull it away like that. There we go. And let's get our new clip on there. Like that. There we go. You see the before and the after. So let me get the rest of these done. All right, let's get our fresh filter and get this installed back on the car. Uh, I've installed new bushings. Sorry, let me show you guys that. I've installed new bushings on the uh, mounting bracket here. These are the rubber bushings, the rubber isolators. Backing lines come up here, and they clip in right here. And this one clips in down here. <clears throat> there we go. All right, let's put our 10 millimeter nuts in here and get our new air filter installed. So right down in here you have, see there's the where the bushing stud comes through there. And where's the other one? Oh, my light's dead. Can't see it. There's another one. So let me get the nuts installed on there. Okay, I've started using uh, the Hanks... Uh, Hankst. They're made in Germany. These filters fit better uh, than the man filters. There we go. Nice brand new filter. Yeah, the man filters, for some reason, they, they go on really tight. I'm not sure what they changed. There we go. Put our new clips on. Next, we're going to put on our breather tube. And then let's just tighten this down on the there. <clears throat> Made a final adjustment to our Bowden cable there. The Bowden cable back here, I just made an adjustment. You want one millimeter of play right there. So I've got that adjusted. Now let's put our accordion tube back on here. All right, our accordion tube goes right down here. And slides right on there like that. All right, the last thing I want to do is change the original insulation um, around our AC manifold. You can see it's kind of crusty. That's the original stuff, and it just it literally comes apart so we'll peel all this off of here and put on some uh, new insulation okay the insulation is just your standard pipe insulation and we'll just slice it right like that All right, they had one there, and we'll put another one right over here, and then that'll be good to go. And there we go, guys. I wiped everything down, cleaned it up a little. That is what the engine compartment should look like.
very nice so the next thing we need to do is take this over to the alignment shop and there she is guys all back to life look how smooth that engine is Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I think the next video in this car will be detailing over at Scott's place and then we'll be ready for the final walk around and test drive. So we'll see you next time. Take care.